Hello. So, I considered uh, throwing on some earrings or combing my hair or getting dressed or something for this, but uh, nah, nah. <laughs> um, yeah, so depending on how I've titled this video, uh, I was fired again. If I didn't title it that, then this is news to you. So, yeah, I was fired again. I don't know who who I was in a past life or what type of wrongdoings I did to deserve such a fate. But uh yeah, I must have been a terrible person. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't actually feel that way, but I do have little moments of pity which which make me angry and make me not want to be adult about this and make me want to bash the system and bash the family and just <sighs> but I'm not going to do that I'm not going to do that um I will say that I am I am upset that this is how my experience has to end um the agency doesn't want me to apply for another family granted I don't want to but uh, they recommend that after two mismatches you go home, um, which is okay, because like I said, I, I, I don't, I don't think this au pair life is for me, um, I've come to a little bit of a conclusion of sorts about the type of people who sign up to be host parents or have au pairs, and what I think is that there are just some weird underlying controlling type of issue that they need to work out or get their kicks off from having an au pair that they feel like they own or I don't know I don't know what it is exactly but there's there's something there uh, and I and I'm not just speaking on my own experiences I'm not just being biased and bashing the system um this is from hearing and speaking to other au pairs and hearing other horror stories about families tracking movements down to like the minute or being very condescending and degrading in the way that they speak to them uh not a, not respecting boundaries telling them who they can or cannot date Things that don't even remotely have anything to do with their job title. Granted, this is a cultural experience and yada, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, we are here for a job. So anything else is overstepping a boundary. And that seems to be a common thing that I have heard here, which has led me to believe that there is some sort of control thing. Um... With that being said, on the particular day that I was fired, um, it had been, from what I remember, the third time in the row, third time in a row in which the host mom seemed to explode over something small. And, and I won't even say it was something small because I don't want to, um, excuse me, I don't want to take away its importance to her. If she felt as if it was an important issue, that's fine. The issue was her reaction to it. She went from zero to 10 very fast. And like I said, this was the third time that it had happened. And I finally gave a little pushback. Why are you speaking to me like this? What is going on? And I was immediately uh, sent to my room or at least she tried to send me to my room like I was some sort of five-year-old and I didn't go I didn't go I I said it seems that you are very upset and I don't know why and I don't understand why you feel as if it's okay to speak to me in this way without respect we are both adults what's going on and everything imploded upon itself everything um 
it was a very hard morning. It was a hard morning full of very uncomfortable things that should have never happened. And I think the biggest thing that hurts me about it is that this isn't an isolated event. There just seems to be so many stories of these people who take in, who take in au pairs into their homes and don't work towards making it a comfortable, safe environment. There is this facade of, oh yes, we want you here and we want to do for you and we want you to feel like it's home. But then they, their actions constantly just tell a different story. And I, I, I don't understand. And it makes me sad because I think about all the younger people who do this, these 18, 19 year olds who don't have the know-how or the confidence to say, hey, don't talk to me that way. Or I don't like the way that you're speaking to me. And, and because of that, things like this go unnoticed and things like this just happen and they think it's okay. I'm sure I'm not this first family's au pair in which they have spoken to that way. In fact, I know. I, in fact, I know. I, I've had a few conversations since this and I know that this was a thing that they did. The worst thing about that day for me was the fact that after a different incident happened, um the host's father thought that it was okay to put his hands on me. No, he didn't punch me or slap me or shove me or anything like that. Uh, he put his hands on my shoulder and pushed me back away from the stairs and tried to like reach my phone or look for my phone because of something else I had did that is, it's not important to go into as far as the story, but, but know that it was something I felt necessary and didn't put anyone in harm's way or anything like that. But m back to the main thing is, is, is he felt that it was okay to put his hands on my body in an aggressive fashion. A and I don't care big or small. He could have, you know, got his pinky and just kind of considered to touch me. It's a problem. I don't know who or what raised him, but where I'm from, putting your hands on a woman is not only not accepted, it's not tolerated. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure what went through his mind when he decided that it was okay to touch me, to stop me from doing something. But at that point, I was done. I was done. And I, I told him, first and foremost, what you're not gonna do is touch me. And at that point he fired me and that's okay because like I said at that point I was done and that was that level was was where I had finally decided I, I have had enough I at, at that point I had been with them for two months and I had already had moments where I have compromised on my morals on how I was raised on how I was taught to give and get respect but that definitely was the moment where everything was no longer worth it um, I was given 30 minutes to pack my belongings, all while being stalked from my bedroom door by this grown man who again thought it was okay to come into the room without knocking because it was no longer my room and yell at me and try to engage into a fight with me and eventually turns the Wi-Fi off in the house so I can't communicate with my family or call the agency. It, thinking about it and saying it all out loud it's it's fucking absurd it's absurd it's it is ridiculous that this is something that he thought was okay that his wife let happen and i wonder i wonder what happens when there's not a no pair there because if that if this is what they do to a stranger and if this is how they behave when a stranger is in their house, I, I, I can't. With that being said, I am somewhere safe now. And I am happy to be back in this gorgeous place. Um, the people I'm staying with now are just amazing, so sweet, so kind. And 
I appreciate them for their hospitality more than I could ever say. Um, I have a week. It is Monday. On Saturday, I need to find somewhere to be. Or I am taking my butt back to the U.S. Um, and here comes my little pitch for a little bit of cash because I would like to stay at least until June 7th. My best friend has already bought tickets to come visit and it would suck that I go home and she's coming here in a month and I'm not even here for her to visit. Um, so what I would need is help paying for a room to stay here for about a month. I've looked at a few things and ran a few estimates and it seems as though I can find a room to rent for four to five hundred euros. Um, maybe cheaper if I can do some sort of couch surfing or things of that nature which I'm definitely going to try. Uh, I'm going to make a little GoFundMe page and link it below. Feel free to help. Feel free not to because I can I can go home. Being here is a luxury and I'm not in a bind and my family will help me and that's okay. I'm asking because the worst you can get is no. But like I said, I, I would like to stay here for another month, um, at least until my best friend gets here because hell, if I deserve anything, it's to at least have one good month in Europe. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support. And, um, yeah, I will, I'll make another video about this and go into a little more depth about everything and how I felt and how, um, and maybe just some tips and tricks for any other au pairs considering doing something like this, things I would have done differently. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I will keep you guys updated. As of right now, I have somewhere to stay until the end of the week. I have two giant bags. I'm gonna I'm gonna condense it down to one, so I'm gonna be throwing away a lot of my belongings. Maybe I'll try to sell them. Um, but if I am going to be doing this whole nomad life thing, I can't I can't be carrying around um, all of these these bags. Uh, so yeah, on my agenda right now is to find somewhere to stay for a month, if I can, condensing down my clothing, and um, just trying to stay positive and, and remain great, grateful that I even got a four month vacation to Europe because that's not something everyone gets and I am, I am genuinely happy about that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. For your continued support i love you guys if you can give to the gofundme i would appreciate it even if i don't get enough to stay it will help with my plane ticket home and help with me getting on my feet when i get home um so yeah love you guys bye